Okay, the topic, natural logarithmic function integration. This corresponds jumping all over the place. Section 5.7. Taking the last one is 3.4. My goodness. Okay, so again, picking up the pieces we left behind as we went through the textbook initially. So kind of knowing differentiation allows you to see where the integral rule can apply. So when you see 1 over x or x to the negative 1, you know then that is the derivative of an ln of x. So you can do the integral rule. Don't forget with the indefinite integration you need the plus c. If you see u prime over u, so derivative over some amount, you have the integral is ln of that amount, again plus c. Now notice absolute value bars around x, around u. It's your responsibility to put the absolute values in because, again, new slash rho, you can't take the natural logarithm of a negative number. So the absolute value bar you put in there to cover yourself. In the case, x or u is the negative value. The absolute values make it positive. If you need to evaluate further and determine whether the absolute value applies, that will happen when you have an initial condition. So your initial condition, when you plug in x, do you get the negative y? Are those paired, or is x paired with a positive y? So in those cases, which we'll look at in later units, specifically in the differential equations unit, you'll see whether you need the absolute value or not. But until you know whether you need it, you need to put it in there. Just like the plus c. c could be zero, in which case you don't really need it. But before you know for certain, put the plus c. Put the absolute value bars. So example one, this two over x, that can be written as the integral of two x to the negative one dx. So we have x to the negative one. You could pull the two in front. So you have two integral one over x dx. So 2 ln absolute value of x plus c. So a lot of times with the integral, just kind of recognizing do we have that setup. <coughs> 1 over x or a derivative over something. <coughs> so to that point, again, Please excuse my coughing, kind of dealing with that. I'm taking the cough drop to try to keep that down, but too many cough drops gives me the tummy troubles. It's too sweet. Hopefully you can relate. Okay, so integral 1 over 4x minus 1 dx. So derivative of 4x minus 1 is 4. Now 4 is not 1, but... They're both numbers, so 1 is some type of the derivative of 4x minus 1. <clears throat> so that some type means we can do a u sub. Now again, remember, we've seen u sub before. So this unit is a lot of techniques we've seen before, but applying them to these natural logarithms and natural exponential functions. So 1 over u and times du over 4. 
So the number four, let's take it as the number four out the front. So one fourth integral of one over u du. And that's pretty nicely. One fourth ln absolute value u plus c. Go ahead and resubstitute your u value. <clears throat> and then think for a moment. If you took the derivative of 4x minus 1, you'd have 4 in the top, so 4 over 4x minus 1. The 1 fourth at the front cancels the 4, so that 1 fourth kind of balances it all out. Kind of scales the whole thing down. Now looking at some definite integration with this, okay? <clears throat> we have x over x squared plus 1. Well, it's not perfect. x is some form of the derivative of x squared plus 1. So we'll go ahead and do u sub. <clears throat> and eventually, maybe you kind of get to a point where you can do these u subs in your head. That's great. If you can't right now, that's fine. Just keep writing it down. If on the exam you're like, you know what? I want to write it down. Be sure that's fine. But what I'm trying to say is there is kind of a pattern to these u sub problems. <clears throat> so we have x over u du. I can hear my youngest son Brendan just making noise. I can tell he's being goofball, kind of funny. But I can hear it, you can't. So me laughing about something you can hear about, that's kind of awkward. So we're going to move on. So the limits, 0 to 3, let's change those limits from x values to u values. So plug in 0 for x, 0 squared plus 1, have 1, and then plug in 3 for x, 3 squared plus 1, that's 10. <coughs> so x and x cancel out. Pull the one half on the front, one to ten, one over u, du. So we have one half, ln absolute value u from one to ten. So let's go ahead and plug things in. Plug in our upper bound. ln absolute value 10 minus ln absolute value 1. And ln of 1, you should know e to what power gives you 1. That's 0, so it cancels out. 10 is a positive number, so we don't need the absolute value anymore. So one half and ln of ten. <clears throat> Here we go. Example three again kinda hopefully starting to recognize some of the patterns. So example three, how many of those can you do mentally? Kinda pause the video, check yourself, and come on back. Cough drop, yay. Okay. The wrap up. So, <clears throat> when normal U substitution is not a viable option. So, again, we've seen this technique before, but now applying it to these LN values. 
So we're going to have to do multiple u substitutions. So when you do the first one, u is x plus 1, du equals dx. Go ahead and put those together. 2x over u squared du. Now all the aces do not cancel out. So back here, u minus 1 equals x. So now I'll plug that in. So 2 quantity u minus 1 over u squared du. So now everything is in terms of u. Now it's just a matter of taking the integral, simplifying down. So we're going to distribute the u2. Actually, no. I'm going to pull the 2 out. So u minus 1 times u to the negative 2. That becomes u to the negative 1. Again, distributing this u to the negative 2. Minus u to the negative 2 du. So u to the negative 1. That's a bending crying. Okay. 1 over u, <clears throat> oh sorry, it's already 1 over u, so taking the integral, ln absolute value u, and this u to the negative 2, that is river integral for power rule, okay, so u to the negative 1, divide by the new exponent, so divide by negative 1, and plus c. So now the 2, distribute that to every single term. So you have 2 ln absolute value x plus 1. Can I be substituting the x plus 1 back in? Minus the negative is plus the positive. U to the negative 1. Just do 1 over x plus 1. 2 times c. Just plus c. There's a lot going on in that problem. But nothing you haven't seen before. Number 5 is a little different. The numerator is not a denominator of the den oh sorry. The numerator is not a derivative of the denominator. So in this case I don't want black. In this case what you can do is a little long division. Can I call the problem bluff? You know, the quotient means you want to divide. So go ahead and divide them. And you'll see, if you don't see why already, you'll see why in a moment. So leading terms, x squared, x squared. So 1. Distribute the 1. 1 times x squared, x squared. 1 times 1 is 1. Subtract all that stuff. <clears throat> x words cancel, 1's cancel. Drop the x down. And x squared, our leading term outside, cannot fit into x. So the division leaves us with 1 plus x over x squared 
plus one. All right, so now we're gonna take, we're gonna go back and take the integral of one plus x over x squared plus one. So go ahead and finish that up, check your work with my complete notes online.